Greetings from Podcastville. It's Thursday, the 12th of motherfucking December. It's somebody's birthday. I don't know whose it is. It don't matter. The church is brought to you by Stance Socks. Let me tell you something, and I'm going to tell you one time. They're the most comfortable socks that I own. When I'm on the road, they give me pep in my step. If I know I'm going to go to Chicago Airport or Dallas or one of those airports where you got to walk for 20 fucking minutes, I put my stance on, stance socks on. They're comfortable, and they support the people in your life the way they support you, all right? Get them at Stance Socks. They're not just comfy. They're going to turn heads. Do me a favor right now. The church family gets a great offer from Stance. You ready? Go to stance.com slash church, and you'll get a free pair of socks with any purchase. Stance is the best way to get everybody Off your holiday shopping list. That's Stance. Grab a pen. Capital S-T-A-N-C-E dot com slash church and get your free pair of socks. Because if you're not Stance, they're just socks. You know what I'm saying? The church is also brought to you by one of the best gifts you could give right now. Listen, I'm throwing little things at you. that These gifts are tremendous. They're affordable. And people don't see them coming. Like the tushy. You're like, Joey, what's a tushy? It's a portable bidet you install in 10 minutes by yourself. Tushy sprays water directly into that rotten fucking asshole of yours and removes the poop completely so you're not sitting on fucking shit all day and bacteria that leads to nasty things like hemorrhoids, yeast infection, UTI, and the most common itchy asshole and skid marks. Do me a favor. Go to hellotushy.com today, right now. They start at $79, and Tushy's latest product, the Tushy Ottoman, helps you get everything out. But let's start right here. Go to hellotushy.com. Take a look at the selection of uh, bidets they have. It's going to blow your fucking mind. You see something you like, press in church and get 10% off your order. This is the motherfucking Christmas gift. Next time you look at grandma, think to yourself, what does that fucking bat smell like? And get her a fucking Tushy, all right? Hello, Tushy.com slash church. Lee, kick this motherfucking mule. Dan Soto, what's the story? Dude, I think with the right music and you beside me in a car, you could talk me into robbing a bank. <laughs> oh, please. This is the if we had If we had the right playlist I and you were in my ear. Shit. I love all this shit. You but you would just be like, do you want to go get that? I'd be like, we're just, oh. this first federal is about to catch this. Oh, they're done. That's and I got the I voice. Do. That's what I used to do. Really? I used to, before I did anything evil. Yeah. I'd get in the car and blast some fucking music Just and get, get fired up. Yeah. Sabbath, bloody Sabbath. I want revenge. I want blood. I'd walk around and I'd crawl in through a window, take your Coke and leave. Spotify should give playlists to incarcerated people. Just in what they hyped up on. You know yeah. I mean? yeah. Can you imagine seeing those things? And you're like, oh my God. this got me to uh, murder a family of four. <laughs> and you're oh like, oh man, look at that playlist. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> when Charles Manson killed, he said, <laughs> yeah, if Manson could do a Spotify playlist. What's happening, brother? Dude, thanks for having me, man. It's hey, nice man. to finally, uh, I'm a fan. So it's nice to No, meet I'm you. a fan of yours. It's funny. You have a, a great resume. You did the stand ups on Netflix. Yeah. You've been with Comedy Central. But it's so weird. When you got into comedy any time before 2000, your goal was ultimately HBO. And then it just went away. Yeah. They started putting on George Klein and all these older comics that, yeah, they're interesting, but they really weren't relevant. And nobody wanted to see them. Yeah. And I appreciate what HBO was doing, but it wasn't getting them nowhere. Netflix came along and stole the show. Yeah, HBO sat there with their dick in their hand. They don't know what the fuck to do. You know, we all grew up on HBO. Yeah, absolutely. HBO was the epitome. I did not want to be on Showtime. Okay, no, I that knew was from the, the beginning. HBO was the first yeah, round draft. Pick. HBO was the first draft. Always. And then somewhere along the line, like in anything in life, you know, something new popped up, hot, which we all appreciate. Netflix is doing a great job. It's good for all. Comedy it's good is for comics. booming because of Netflix. But now HBO saying, you know what? I think we're going to regain what was once ours now. Yeah. It's free game now. I think we're going to do something different with specials, blah, 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 blah. So I congratulate you on that, that Thanks. you got to the top floor of uh, of the specials. I mean, you did Comedy Central, Netflix. Yeah, and now, getting so. the... Uh... And I'm not putting Netflix down or Comedy Central. No, I'm I just think... saying that 
you know, Central started in 91. When Comedy Central started, you know, one of the first shows they had that was big was Politically Incorrect. Yeah. Which later moved on to ABC, which is now Real Time with Bill Marv. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah, growing up, Comedy Central, I think like I'm one of the first <coughs> generation of kids that grew up with first cable. But then you had Comedy Central. 91, I was eight years old. And I was able to watch a bunch of comedy that, you know, I would have never had access to before Comedy Central. But HBO was still the thing where when you got the free weekend, you would try to tape whatever specials you could and watch it. And I remember being a kid and seeing like those half hours, like Chappelle's half hour, Patton Oswalt's half hour from the mid 90s. And you'd see all those and be like, man, this is the shit. HBO is because you knew they were unedited. Comedy Central was still cable. So then even Chappelle's Killing Him Softly and all those kind of specials, were, you know, both the rocks, getting one was like, oh, fuck. It was great, but there was like also like this pressure. Yeah, it was Bigger and Blacker HBO. Yeah, both. Uh, I, bigger and Blacker and, and Bring the Pain. Because I, I never had HBO, and HBO for me was like a hotel on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a big thing. Like, oh, snap, we got an HBO. Like, they're swearing in these specials. Yeah. Like, it was a, it was a big deal. You find out what year HBO started it had to be if i had to take a guess i say 73 74 yeah i still remember my friends talking about a movie called groove tube yeah okay and it it was the either the lead up to a film called kentucky fried chicken kentucky fried film or vice versa 72 72 it was the whole cast of saturday night live before saturday night live yeah Chevy chase John Candy. See who the cast was. Of 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 the SNL and seventy two. No, no, it's Kentucky Fried. Oh, of, sorry. Uh, of Groove Tube. Groove Tube. Sorry. If you look, so at this the, is basically like uh, you're like seeing like a a mixed tape of comedy. No, this was not stand up. Yeah, but I'm saying like of improv people that yes. are going to go on to be SNL. Right. This is this was yeah brilliantly done. Who was the cast? Ken Shapiro. Richard Belzer, who we just talked about, Chevy Chase, Buzzy Linhart, who I've never heard of, Richmond Bear, Berkeley Harris. Are these names ringing a bell? No, but they were like improv people that were yeah. well known. And, you know, it was just sketches. Like uh, Kentucky Fried movie was a sketch. Uh, they were in a courtroom and fucking. All of a sudden, the attorney takes opens a briefcase up and takes a dick out and puts it on his head. <laughs> and he starts saying, we are from another planet and all this shit. When you're 12 and you smoke That's a what joint you between see. 18 kids, yeah. it's hysterical. It's yeah. another scene of three black guys playing dice and a white guy walks up, puts a construction helmet on, and he looks at all three guys and he goes, niggers, and he runs and they chase him. <laughs> yeah. And then it shows, you know. But the moral of the story is Kentucky Fried Movie uh, 72, you said? Uh, well, HBO started in 74. 74, so I was I was 11. I was correct. And that's, and I, I mean, I, yeah, I SNL dying. started in 75. I was dying to see it, Ted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so the, yeah. the word on the street was Groove Tube <laughs> had a scene where a guy chased a naked woman, but it was on HBO. Again, nobody had HBO. No one had HBO. I still remember. It's brand new. So I they're... still remember sitting my mom down. Cuban mom, yeah, and like breaking it down for her how I needed HBO for school, and you know, because they don't know they're watching Telemundo. Wait, you, you pushed know? a subscription to a pay channel for a titty? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, that's I'm like, brilliant. Mom, let me talk to you. About what this. big? That's big thinking. It right? had to be like fourteen ninety five. So yeah. my mom goes, "We'll do it on one condition. We split it." And I was like, "Fine." So I had a <laughs> there, there was a box. You had to get boxes in those. Yeah, days. it was a box with a switch. And it was like 1 to 14, 14 to 28, 28 to whatever. <laughs> yeah. And those were the channels. Yeah, yeah. And then there were porno channels, Lee, on like 56. But they would come and slanted. Yeah, scramble. So they'd come and scramble. And I remember you that. And you had to scramble the button, and you'd catch like the pussy, and you'd start jerking off. Then it would go away. Like, <laughs> yeah, ah. you just go to get glimpses you know, of it. But I still remember putting my mother together That's so for funny. HBO. <clears throat> Her going out, the groove tube being on, and me sitting there, <laughs> underwear off, ready to bang this motherfucker out to the fucking groove What tube. a space shuttle And launch. it was just a scene. Yeah. That's it. Did you, and there was no way, like, now there's DVR. Now you can rewind TV. Right. But then you had to almost. That's it. 
It was it was timing. It was all timing. Timing. There you was had no to be DVR, ready. There was no VCR. You couldn't see something and backtrack it. You couldn't see something and be like, "Let me no. go back no. and now. I'm going to jerk no. off to it." You were like, "I have to no. get ready to jerk off to this exact moment." Like Woman in Red. Yeah, Woman in Red with the chick, the hot chick. She was the one from Weird Science. Oh, the one Kelly uh, LeBrock. Yeah, Kelly Kelly LeBrock was Kelly, awesome. Kelly LeBrock was pure heat. Yeah, Weird Science was a movie that I could. Jerk oh, off to. Weird Science. She's beautiful. The one she did when she married poor Steven Seagal. Yeah, yeah. Steven Seagal ruined her fucking career. That, that, that he was. She was fucking beautiful. But you, uh, I'm the generation of like the VHSs of those. So you would get like the VHS of Weird Science and then jerk off to the Kelly LeBrock coming out after oh, the, the shower maker. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Oh and then you just be like, all right. Jeez. And then eventually come and then Chet's on the screen and you're like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> well, with me, Kel- one time, what's his name, goes to ring her doorbell and she gets out of bed and she's naked. Yeah. And for a split second, you see a pussy. I <gasps> still remember 1986 freezing that, being so coked up. Yeah. And just like trying to get a heart on it and just freezing <laughs> Kelly Brock's pussy. Like, you didn't see the clit or nothing. Yeah. It was just a little black bush of hair of her wow. getting out of the window. Getting out of bed and looking out the window, and then they don't show it again. I think the first one for me was maybe Titanic with the boob. That was your first titty? I think so. I don't know. That's the first one I can remember being like, oh, my God. But the first tit I saw was when I went to see The Godfather. Okay. She takes the shirt off yeah. on the honeymoon. Like, my head almost exploded. Like, I was 10, I was <laughs> like, all right, now I know why my mom hides those bras. I didn't know what a bra was for now. Yeah. You didn't realize it was to conceal to put, yeah, something it. great. And she didn't have good Apollonia. Yeah. Did not Apollonia was titties. hot, though. She was beautiful. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Monday, <laughs> Tuesday. But she, yeah, had, like, yeah, like learned know, jerk. she had like, she already had a kid titties. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> she already had like two Mexican kid titties. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. the nipples look the aorta. The She's on the story. comeback tour for her titties. She's on the comeback tour, so. Like that was that was I just wanted to talk about HBO like but yeah Schwarzenegger and then my mother kept it just you know, for the rest kept it and you know you just started watching stuff How you you got Carlin a bunch of Carlin the all original that Carlin stuff. like he did like ten at HBO yeah he did something crazy and but that's then, like yeah uh, and then I, I then I lost you know I lost cotton. my mom died and yeah. then H then we got HBO again me and my buddy in high school. Chipped in and got HBO. Yeah. Because for 200 bucks, you could get somebody to connect a pole and he'd give you everything. So the dude lived next door to me. Yeah. And he was selling boxes, 250, lifetime subscription. I was just gonna... Rated X, porn from China, midget porn. <laughs> Wait, fucking, so you got the you know, upgrade? Rapes that happened on the street that people caught with yeah. fucking, you know, they had everything on there. <laughs> you like, you know, with you Argentinian wanted, news. You, yeah. You, you get weird that, shit. 200 bucks, one-time payment. Yeah. Then after about six months, they put a trap on your box. Then you would call them and they'd take the trap off. And I still remember the best month ever. It's weird. I saw, <laughs> I saw Mike Binder last night at the store. Great yeah. man. He's awesome. Mike Binder's the man. Mike Binder's the man. And he had a movie called Hollywood Nights in 1981. Yeah. And it was, the, this is, HBO only had. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird how I put on TV now, and HBO has HBO 9. Yeah. You know, yeah. HBO Latino, yeah. HBO <laughs> Dirty <laughs> Comedy, HBO Regular Comedy, yeah. HBO uh, Ukraine, <laughs> HBO 1, 2, 3, HBO Trump. East yeah. and West. Yeah, East and West. Only was, audio. When I was growing up, it was fucking HBO. Yeah. And they had eight movies. I'm hoping they it. put mine on the original. Yeah, and they had eight movies. That's it. And every night for a month, they played those same movies, only in a different order. So me and my buddy had a path. We would come home at 12, walk the path, mark, shoplift, ice cream. Like, we go, what do you have, yeah. $2? I got $4. What are the essentials? We'll shop. We'll lift the rest. Yeah. So we would like shoplift like salami and shit like that. But we'd buy ice cream and eggs, and we'd go home and make like protein shakes and salami sandwiches on white bread. And we'd watch The Raging Bull, Hollywood Nights, and Thief with James Caan. Okay. On every night. So you every just night. turn it on and you get guaranteed one of one those. of the, one of those movies was going to be on. Did and ever the movie t- behind it was going to be Thief, and the okay. movie behind that was going to be Hollywood Nights. Yeah. yeah, it was like three in order. So if you get Thief, you're like, all right, we got yeah. Raging Bull next. And Hopefully, then, H- then HBO got dark for a while. Yeah, but they started showing a lot of pussy. They had a show. Are you talking about Retro Diaries? They had Retro Diaries. They had The Hitchhiker. 
the hitchhiker. I don't remember the hitchhiker. Hitchhiker was this lonely dude that walked on the road <laughs> like kung fu. Fucking, but he didn't just, know it was kung just with fu. A dick? He was just a dirty white dude that walked around and <laughs> hot white women would fuck him all over. And it was like titties yeah. and bush, but they wouldn't show penetration. D- yeah. But good enough. It's a lot of uh, him holding her yeah, by the lower but, back. Right, and then like moving all that stuff. Of course. Yeah, yeah. And un- he would fuck her in a car yeah. or in a tent outside. Or they would do something along the road. And then she would leave him. And then he would walk in the following episode. Some just other fuck dirty someone bitch else. would pick him up. Dude, just dicking that from would, town to that, town. That would come on like at 1231 yeah. on Fridays. And then they had Tales from the Crypt. Loved it. Loved it. Tales Loved from it. something, some little midget Yeah, monster. the Crypt Keeper? Ah, yeah, the Crypt Just talking shit. all that shit. Where like, and it's here's the, another one. Yeah. yeah, dude, I loved it. I, that was like, I was kind of the age where I, I hit puberty right as HBO went titty heavy, like with like Dream On, which was like a comedy show, but they would always show titties. You just knew at one point in the episode, you're like, I'm going to see titties. And I was at that age, kind of like you were at, where you you're like timing it out. We're like, all right, dream dream on's on. Let's get ready. And then the titty, and you're like, go. But then we had tapes of like Cinemax movies because Cinemax came along and was like, we know what you guys want. Just a little bit of story and a lot of soft core. Yeah, Cinemax is just disgusting. Yeah. Well, they just came along and like, here's just here's just soft core porn, which was the best. Yeah, they started like at ten thirty. Yeah, and you were just like, because you knew that. Because my friend Mitch had the box, had the the black box that unscrambled everything. So you'd get the Spice Channel, but it was at my friend's house. And that you don't want to just like watch a porn with like seven other 12-year-old dudes in a room. And you're like, all right, I got to get out of here. Everyone would leave. Everyone would just get, eventually be like, I get the fuck out of here. Because everyone wanted to go home and jerk off because you're like watching porn. And now kids just, it's just on their phones. They're just like, oh, like just look at porn. You had to like find it like a truffle pig. Yeah, you like for dig it. for it, and I'm way older than all you. Yeah, fuckers. you came up. I, mean, I still remember when you had to send the money order <laughs> for 19.95 for four pornos and a projector. And, and a projector, have, and add. Would you have to intercept it? You'd have to take it to somebody's house whose parents worked all day, so the box would land there, and so you'd have to sit there and watch the mailman <laughs> come. And once he put that box, that drop. The word got out, <laughs> and pornos were not produced. It was just yeah. a camera. With some broken down woman who they dragged into a room, it was just horrible. Porno from the seventies was really the Me Too. Yeah. That's when women would have said, "What the fuck is going on?" But, yeah, you know, women getting dragged by their hair into a room, yelling, and three Puerto Ricans fucking us. <laughs> yeah, it was just it was porno that scared you. As yeah, a you child. are. <laughs> like yeah, as yeah, a if child, you saw that young enough, it shook you. I remember being in a room, and when the kid when I did uh, Stress Factory, yeah. He showed up, and he sat in the front row, and I go, ladies and gentlemen, if you've got a question about any of my stories, now is the time to ask them. Yeah. And I just started unloading on what him and I saw as a child. Jesus. And I, and I even did it in Miami this week because there was a kid who lived across the street from me. Really? He wasn't there with us that yeah. day. But I still remember ordering that porn, getting the box, and six of us chipped in, <laughs> five of us. Chipped in like four dollars a piece, <laughs> and we fucking yeah, dude. That was someone's like that, we, someone was an investment. And with we're you waiting, and like, we're yeah. waiting. You know, every day that you get the package. Yeah, right? Lee, did you go by there? I was there all day. The mailman didn't come. <laughs> well, it's because it would say six to eight weeks. So would someone mark it in a calendar? You had to like put it in. Yeah, like, we, like we mailed it on the thirteenth. There was March. like a countdown. So it was, we had a countdown going. So once the six weeks came, we were ready to blow. <laughs> Did you get the porn yet? No. Did, did you come just in. did you just eventually start jerking off to the idea of the package getting there? Just getting there. <laughs> yeah, like and I'm a jerk once off. We got the, it, the party was in my attic. Oh. We put fucking a sheet up on the wall. We yeah. made sandwiches. <laughs> we fucking covered the window with aluminum foil like a crack attic. Yeah. We put that porn on, and we were traumatized. <laughs> I like mean, traumatized to the point that I'm not a hooker guy. Yeah, or a strip club guy, or anything from what I saw. So if we had a reaction, and I'm telling you the truth, this yeah. is not a joke. That yeah, I, yeah. I think back. You look at my personality. I'm a wild man. Yes, I love pussy and I love everything. But Lee, we, eight years, we, we went to a strip club. He hasn't even Never. gone. Yeah, you just because of that video. Just that video just gave me like I don't even watch porn. People send me shit. Yeah, 
you know, if somebody says to me, this girl was at the store, yeah, I'll look up her name. If if, 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 if I meet a porn chick yeah. and she tells me her name, I'll look her up or something. But besides that, I don't look up porn. I don't yeah. know anything about it. I know there's Pornhub and you porn. And it was it was it cuz of that like after that video even as a kid did you were you just like I, I don't I was very catholic. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was raised by a single mom that yeah. was uh she spoke sexual but I didn't like it. Yeah. And then seeing that fucked me up. How old were you when you saw it? I probably I got to say 13. Okay. And we had an 11 year old in the room and he just started crying. Yeah. <laughs> like he just started, he just broke down. I mean, that shows you a real, like. And uh, today he's got six kids. So I don't I don't know if it's because of that porn or whatever. You snapped him in the line. It just snapped you. You got scared straight with the first. I mean, your first porn thing, here's the thing even when it's not a, a terrible situation, even when it's a good. Like, uh, I saw probably like a late 80s, early 90s porn for my first porn. It was still. The first hardcore porn you see, I was maybe around the same age, 13, 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, oh, fuck, what the fuck? Because it's so uh, graphic and more hardcore. But then, like, to make it worse, like you see, that could snap you shut. Somebody approached me this week, a publicist, and they wrote me this long note about a client they have. He wants to come on the podcast and talk about, uh, you know, porn addiction in this yeah. country and i looked at it and i'm like you know and how it ties in with human trafficking and you know i would have had him if he would have cut it short at the porn addiction yeah because i love to learn about that stuff but i don't want to hear about human trafficking on the show that takes the show somewhere else yeah you know i like this show because from time to time even if we get serious we do crack a few jokes in between there's no, you know. <laughs> yeah, you're like, talking to a guy about human trafficking. Yeah. You try to crack a joke. And I don't want to talk about human trafficking. Yeah, I you know, that. every day we drive here in North Hollywood, and you see all these massage parlors, and I can't even think. Like, I go to one massage parlor, but I go, I take my wife there. Yeah, I took Lee there. It's yeah, called Ching Wound or something like yeah. that, and they do foot rubs. It's all guys. It's yeah. legit. It's, it's not one chick. It's yeah. legit. But all those other ones on Lancashire, they're all. Tug and hugs, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you ever go in there, like one Christmas, my back hurt. And everyone I went into, like I walked in, and I was like, you know what? Let me make an appointment. Because I could tell you, yeah. you, just the looks they had. And the woman looked broken. You could tell they're human trafficked. So you could tell by walking in the door. You could they would tell. look at you and just be like, hey, fuck, here we go. Like, I got to fuck this guy for freedom. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh my God, I'll do. I'll jump off a fucking bridge. Do you want to know how I'll sweet that freedom is? I'm about to fuck this guy. For and it was funny because I watched this documentary, and it's the biggest concentration of them in Houston. Mm -hmm. Really? And I've had friends go to Houston and say, "Oh my God, we went to a massage parlor. She looked like Lucy Lou. She wanted three hundred, and she let you fuck her in the ass. Oh, like condom, you know, just crazy. She don't yeah. comment." There's some comics who are fucking savages. Yeah, you find out so, some guys, and you're like, man, you should have been in the 15th century. Oh, yeah, there's some comics that are just, that's, that's, and listen, there's some comics, we, uh, I was always drawn to the drug part of it. Okay. Second was sex, you know, yeah. the crazy I was shit. alcohol bump, first. The bump that you bump into on the road. For some guys, I know three comics who blew their lives over their sex addiction, but I would never say nothing to, I've never said it to them. But I know that their sex addiction yeah. cost them their comedy career the same way a drug it problem, could be alcohol, or drug problem, or because I think about that because I stopped drinking six years ago, and and you think like I have a friend who overeats, you know what I mean? He's like five hundred pounds, and and I think about that, and I'm like, man, I hope that what a hard thing to stop because the thing that's you got to stop the thing that you have to do. I don't have to ever drink alcohol, like sex. If you're a sex addict, you want to have sex again with your wife, so it's weird. You know, it'd be like if, if I had to drink a beer every day. And they'd be like, don't be an alcoholic. That's a weird addiction to think. And I, I feel like I'm lucky that I don't have it. I was going to say, like, I'm sure I don't want to. I'm sure it's hard. There's parts to it. But sex addiction seems like the the best. Like, it doesn't seem like it's that bad. I think it could fucking yeah, destroy it could your life. Destroy you. I, how? You know how? Because I have a dear friend that I got to meet out here. Yeah. And after four years, I asked, like, why don't you have a boyfriend? Yeah. You know, she became friends with my wife. There's no other than Hollywood. She moved back to New York now. Yeah. And she just told me this sex addict thing, and we'd smoke joints. And yeah. one day I just said, break it down for me, and it was just horrific. Yeah. 
and it was something with a father, the uncle. Oh, okay. You know, but I, yeah, know, I don't think was, dude, was I don't think anyone's born a sex addict. I don't think anyone just comes out like, un, you know what I mean, like an unscathed childhood. And there's like I'm a, I don't. I feel like it always is. Addictions always come from like a fucking rough landing as a child. Absolutely. I think I think as a kid, when it's like a response to a fucking fall. And I think it runs in something. I think, like for me, listen, I've been addicted to something. Since I could remember. Yeah. You know, let's start with my pacifier addiction. Yeah. I gave a pacifier. Sucking your thumb. <laughs> I gave up pacifiers when I was six. Okay. And I still remember how I used them. I used them like people smoke cigarettes. Where well, you'd stress out. So I'd play with you. Yeah. And then let's say I lost a game. I'd go, I'd be right back. <laughs> and I'd go in a corner and suck three times, then come back and keep playing Monopoly. Uh, that I, is I looked, fucking I, I thought hilarious. About that. I, I thought about that not as a Just joke. a pack of when pacifiers? You, I had them everywhere, all over the fucking apartment, 80 to 90 of them. And my mother had these Japanese dolls, and I used to play ball in the house. And okay. she goes, listen, one day you're going to break one of those dolls. First, I'm going to break your head. Yeah. Two, you're going to pay me the $300 for those dolls. I kept playing with the Spalding number two. Yeah. You know, they were a little harder for stick yeah. ball. And I broke the fucking doll. And she goes, you either have to pay me the 300 or you give up your addiction to pacifiers. I knew I wasn't giving that bitch three hundred dollars. She would have to kill me to get the change I had saved up from the bar. I had exactly like three ten. Yeah, yeah. Like you're not blowing that like fucking. Six. You're not gonna blow most of I'm that. I'm not blowing that. Yeah, like, fucking doll. Yeah. And I still remember her and I walking around the house and me going and and she had a garbage bag <sighs> and me throwing. You know, I had them hiding under pillows. I had one like crazy glue. Did you have table. like? Did you have like a like a period of withdrawal? Like, did she have to leave you in a room when you're just like? I don't remember. Like, I, I looked at my daughter when my daughter had it. Yeah, the binky thing. It was over with her with three, and that was enough. And I still remember her asking for it a couple times. Yeah, and then me coming back from the road and my wife going, "Don't even bring it up." Yeah, and that was it. I just moved on, but I guarantee. That that addiction turned into. Then I became a karate kid. Okay, and I was addicted with that. Yeah, like that. So and then Bruce Lee came and it drove me over. And then from that, I probably got hooked on fucking ice cream. Yeah, I don't know. I, I ate pizza every day. Like yeah. steakums. Everything I do, I'm a creature of habit. Yeah, you know. I was thinking last night. If somebody wants to kill me, all they got to do is go to the store on a Tuesday night. <laughs> I'm yeah, at the store right every there. Tuesday night. He's gonna be right. I'm there. at the store every Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, you know. Rain, snow, shine. I feel bad. Christmas Eve is on Tuesday, and I'm like, "What do I do? Like, what you do gotta I go do? to the store? Yeah. Like, what do you I do? You don't think about that when you have like habits like that, or like kind of like OCD compulsions like that. When it's something like a holiday, and you're like, "No, but I do this thing on this day," and everyone's yeah. like, "You gotta eat turkey with your family." You're like, fuck. When you do listen for you to get to HBO, yeah, you had to have some type of OCD, oh, I mean, something to sit down and make you right. This shit, you have to have OCD to do what we do over and over and over. What's weird is and repetitive and the same thought. I feel I feel weird when I come off the road because you go you get so used to going Thursday to Saturday, back on Sunday, you know, New York, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, back on the road on Thursday, back home Sunday, and you start doing that. And the past month, I stop after I filmed the special, I was like, all right, I'm just gonna stay in the city, do yeah, spots, uh -huh. and I, I started to feel like uh, it's itchy. Itchy is the best word, where I was just kind of like, what the fuck? And it, I was getting bothered easy. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm, we're creatures of habit. You have to go back to doing that. And uh, that's why I like stand-up, because I can go do the same thing. I can go to the cellar Tuesday night after the bar. You know what I mean? Like I need two weeks a month. Yeah. On the road? That's what I do. I need it. Yeah. Not financially. Like, you just need to do it. I need to do it yeah i need it for my sanity i've trained my family on it already that's the best my wife loves it yeah <laughs> you know yeah my daughter loves it yeah you know the weeks i go on the road her and i spend that little extra time sure you know it's something you know i was thinking about it last night that i'm making it easier for my daughter to understand hopefully she marries a guy that travels and it's going to be like fine yeah you know because i was the blueprint of her growing up. And she's men. comfortable with it. I travel six days. And I tell her, I look at her face, it's five fucking days. Yeah. Yeah, but I miss you. Five fucking days. And we keep the lights on. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. I mean, uh, I need the road also. It, I, I could tell. I could tell when I'm home for a while. And you get to, the road is, uh, what's weird is you start becoming 
more of yourself on the road than at home. You know, you, you there's like a part of you that's like, that's truly you by yourself, and you're just in this. Like, I, now it's nice to travel with features, have you know, a friend with you sometimes, and that makes it easier. But then when you're just like in Buffalo at Helium for five shows, and you're like, yeah, this is who I am when I'm in Austin at Cap City. You know, I'm still that guy during the Saturday after press. You become like that. That's just who you are as a person. So then when you don't go on the road, you're kind of like, I kind of miss doing stuff like that. It's crazy how you evolve on the road also. Because 28 years, let's say safely, correctly, I've been going on the road like an animal for 20, conservatively. Can I ask you, as someone that's can't just started on the road and only gone on the road with the internet, what was that like before when you're on the road and there's no fucking internet or you didn't have movie channels? Well, this is what I'm going to tell you. Yeah. It's so weird. Like, okay, right now Lee's been doing it two years. In about two years, he's going to start getting calls to do one-nighters and whatnot. Yeah. And at first, the road is you you drop your bags. You go to Cleveland, you go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, <laughs> you go here, you go there, you you have an idea. You know, you're a feature act, so this, you're not going to go to the best restaurant in town. Sure. But you're going to find affordable, and you go out and you do things, and you connect with people. Now, every time you go to that club as a feature act, which you're going to go to six times. Yeah. You know, you're going to go there six times before you if become you're, Yeah, a if you're lucky, you're getting that yeah. work like that's every two months. twice a year. Yeah. That's twice a year, three years, you're going to go there as a feature. It's clubs you could get like three in if they were right. nice. And, and if they really like you, they'll go stay next week. Yeah. You know, so... Assuming that you become friends with the bartender, now he'll tell you, hey, fly in Tuesday, and there's a, a room, an hour for me that pays 200 and now you start to meet people. But then the road, then you get married. You know, for you, you were drinking for yeah. six years. Yeah. And one day you said, you got to stop because this isn't working on the road. Oh, man, I was waiting. The road up. is a license to go. Yeah. when you And, and that's why I tell people, the road for me, when I fucking got in that car, June 25th, 1995 in Boulder, and I headed out to Ogden, Utah, that's yeah. open for Tribble, you know, do a Tribble run. Yeah. I, my mentality changed. You become a savage. Yeah. You become Tom Berridge in Major League. Yeah. I wake yeah. him up in the beginning. Jake Taylor. Yeah. Two naked the women League. on top of him. Yeah. And a chicken in the room. Uh, you can at least say you're from the Yankees. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you become on the road. Yeah. You All you do is party, write, and perform. Yeah. Party, write, and perform. And somewhere on the way to Tuscaloosa, you stop and do laundry, <laughs> and you bump into a fat black chick who... Fucking will cook for you, and then you go back. You, you know, and that's part of the adventure. Sure. And then you get, then you stop doing drugs and drinking. Yeah. Now the road becomes something different to you. Now you're starting to get special. So yeah. you're dedicating writing. Uh, you know, you want to get healthy. So now the road becomes a gym also. Yeah. Now you actually look at gyms. You go to restaurants. Go to different restaurants. You want to get the like local Like actual flair. restaurants, though. Like the local flair. Yeah. You don't want to go to Morton's in New York. You want to go to the local flair. Yeah. You know, let's go up to Arthur Avenue in the Bronx <laughs> and get some spaghetti and fucking meatballs, you know? <laughs> and then for me now, the road is a, is an escape. You know, when I'm home, I have a child, I have sure. a wife, a podcast, you know, it's constant. When I'm on the road, it's over. Yeah. It's about my Netflix, yeah. my notebook, and what I could walk to to eat. <laughs> that's you know that's where I want. I, I would when yeah. You, I, when, you, when you tell me the best, I restaurant kind of am like is, that right now. I walk to where I right, eat. When a you lot tell of me times. the best restaurant is Choo Choo's, yeah, I look at and I look at Twitter. I look at Uber. If it's more than a ten spot, I don't need to go there. You know, you I live in L.A. I don't want to be in another car. Yeah. <laughs> I want to walk, breathe, get some vitamin D. Yeah, because I'm going to be in my hotel room. See, I look at, I always look for the restaurants that are in between the club and the hotel. If you find something and you're like, all right, that's on the way, so I can get it or take it back. For some reason, there was a, a couple months where I just wanted to get food and go back to my hotel room. Like, you want to go back to that's your cage best. early? Like, ah, I don't ah. like food in my room. You don't? No. So I use like when I go with. Uh, so you go out to eat. You like, stay let's out, say yeah. you go to Nyack. Yeah. You go to Nyack, right? Yeah. They got great food in fucking Nyack. Yeah. They got a Chinese restaurant that delivers. Okay. And they got a fucking Italian restaurant that delivers. So yeah. 
we we did the show f- uh, Thursday night, Friday. Me and Matt Fultron, we just got fucking a, a bag of Italian food for fifty <laughs> bucks, spaghetti and clam sauce, yeah. bruschetta, fucking pizza, the full go, and that was all it for the day. We just he took three <sighs> slices, I took three slices, and then Saturday it was Chinese. You know, but we eat it downstairs in the in the breakfast area. Yeah. So we'll sit there watching like whatever's on TV. Oh, so you go to the lobby and eat? Fuck yeah! When I bring food back, I yeah. go to the lobby and eat. You know what? That's a good point because I always notice I don't I want get food in my room. The uh, the messiest food is when you bring it back and then you get like a you'll get like a corner of a to go thing that'll open up and that's on the desk. Yeah, every no every bed spread is white. It's the yeah. Do I got yeah. to a fucking room once in San Diego? 10, 11, 12 years ago. And I brought a pot cookie with me. And it was in a baggie. Yeah. And I, put the, I put the pot cookie in the shelf. And the next morning I woke up. And this was a fucking Hilton. <laughs> this is like a Hilton, guys. Yeah. This is like a hotel in the fucking <laughs> gaslight district. Yeah. White people. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know that a mouse ate the tail end of the cookie? <laughs> the baggie? He ate through the baggie, so it was like a yeah. simple cookie. Guys, he didn't eat much. I'm not going to lie to you. So he ate the whole cookie. He ate, like, maybe this much of the cookie. But can and you imagine baggie, what they did to a mouse? Oh, my God. He's, that's why he had to stop. He's <laughs> eating. He's thinking. He's getting up. He's at the bakery. Yeah. And all of a sudden, his diabetes hit him. <laughs> that motherfucker went under the sink and died, that motherfucker. He got through. He was fighting through that bag, <clears throat> knowing what was on the other side. He's like, a whole Cookie, he was probably thinking of the cookie he was going to give to his family, how he was generations, and then he was eating it, and he's like, this, what the fuck? Just putting him sideways. I, I fucked that little mouse up, bro. <laughs> that motherfucker. That That's what you got to do. Instead of traps, he just sent, leave he Joey sent, Diaz weed cookies he out. He sent the he postcard to one of his cousins on the train. <laughs> you know those trains on the A train where you're waiting for the mouse? Yeah, that you're mouse. You're waiting for the train. Yeah, yeah. You see something go by, and you're like, I got to stop smoking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That mouse got into jazz and, then and just look, started... Then you Walking look different. at the fucking train tracks and you start to see them in New York City. Like, yeah. And you're like, okay, I'm not fucking seeing things. Yeah, they uh, the tracks in New York, you just, it's actually the way I feel like if you live near a river, you would watch a river run. <laughs> you just watch like rats run down the subway oh, yeah. tracks. And it's like, if you don't get skis out, you're just kind of like, nah, whatever. They're down there. So the special came out last Saturday. Night. Yeah, yeah. So now totally streaming. So, streaming on all the platforms and how you feeling about it good man but it's like that new like all right let's get back to work it's a horrible feeling I it's horrible it's 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 two things it's like exciting because you feel like you have a whole field in front of you like just go run around but then you're kind of like man i had some structured bits i had some bits that i really worked the fuck out how of. long did you take between you shot this special to prepare I think we did the stand-ups on Netflix in March of 2017. And so from March 2017 to October of 2019. So about two and a half years. Okay. So you had plenty of time. Yeah. And I went to Edinburgh. An, an I went hour? to Scotland and worked an, on an it. An hour or yeah, half yeah. hour? Hour. Okay, good. And just worked that some bitch. Worked it. To, you know, wanted to get it as tight as I could and then film it. And then it was just. Where did you film it? Bowery Ballroom. No shit. Yeah. How did it feel? Great. Great. It's a, it was a it's a great rock venue, but it's also just a good venue. Got about four hundred people in there. HBO shot a couple specials or just you? They shot uh they did like seven in two thousand nineteen. I want to say they did about seven or eight specials. So I'm the last one of the year. Good but for uh, you, man. yo man, it's great. It's that HBO. I got them to do the nineteen eighty three special presentation intro, where you see the dad turning the TV, and then they go up over the town and. You know, it comes out of the stars. The ba-na-na-na. I was like, man, if I could just get that on this special, and they're like, yeah, we'll do it. I was like, fuck it, that's great. All you right, control everything. And yeah, you just you just ask for shit, and they're like, yeah, no. Cool. Where are your parents now? You said you grew up in Colorado. Aurora. Yeah, I grew up in Aurora. My mom is still out there. She's still living in Aurora. And then my dad died when I was fourteen. Sorry, so it's just oh, thanks. Yeah, it's just uh, just been there. And then my grandmother still lives out in San Francisco. So I spend. Those are the two places I go. I I hate to ask you this. Where were you? Because we talked about before the podcast. I have a deep, deep love for Colorado. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you what happened. And the people who are listening in Denver. I just went to Denver and I did two shows at the Paramount. And I went back to the room and I cried a little bit that night. Yeah. Because 
I've been to every state in the fucking union. You know, Alaska, Hawaii, pretty much. I haven't done comedy in all of them. But Colorado's a special place. Or it was, when I first stepped foot in Colorado in 1983, it was a magical kingdom, especially where I came from in New York City and New Jersey. Yeah. I'm from right over the tunnel. Yeah, so you He's saw over shit. the tunnel, that's where I'm from. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then New York City. And listen, not to take anything away from New York City, when New York City sneezes, everybody catches a cold. New York runs this bitch. But when I went to Colorado, like, I just, it, it was something magical. Yeah. Like, what I was expecting and what I saw were two different things. Did you think it was just going to be like a podunk, tiny cow town? I still remembered being a child. eighty three, man. That's I, Colorado. Denver's not big in eighty three. I still remember being a child and them always going tonight on ABC, you know, uh, whatever, six o'clock Central, seven o'clock Pacific, eight o'clock Mountain Time. Yeah. And Mountain Time yeah. always fucked with me. I said, "What the fuck is <laughs> yeah, Mountain yeah. Time?" You know. Yeah, yeah. So when somebody came up to me and they go, "Listen, you're not doing too well here. I got a spot in Basalt." It's 45 minutes from Aspen. You know, we got a house there. You're more than welcome to come out and get your head together. It was like, yeah. wow. But So I went, you know, in those days, you did not go online. Yeah. You went to the library. I was a bookie on 118th Street. Okay. And I went to some New York library, and I got an encyclopedia and looked up Colorado, and I read all about it. And I was like, I guess I'll go out there. And I, I pictured Little House on the Prairie. And yeah. Then, I remember waking up on I-70 and seeing all this commerce and all this shit. Yeah. But we weren't headed there. We were headed to Basalt. Yeah, know? so you had to go through Colorado. You go through the, we had to go through through the foothills. Shit, and all of a sudden, you start to see this. Georgetown. This, You're going by Georgetown on I-70. You, you see that. start to see, it, you know, what went, it went, you know, except for the mountains, it looked like fucking Newark. You know, downtown Denver, whatever the fuck. You know, downtown was a hellhole when I moved to Colorado. Yeah. So we didn't stop in Denver. We drove through Denver, and I was like, mm, <laughs> not that bueno. But once we got out of Denver, and you start feeling those mountains. Yeah. And I got to be honest with you, and a lot of people, you think I'm crazy. You don't feel it because you grew up there. I didn't grow up there. But the yeah. first time I was surrounded by mountains, something happens to you. You know, something happens to you. The yeah. mountains really have an effect on you. When I lived in Seattle, I, I, I would go to Bremerton, and that's the deepest point in the United States. That's why they launched submarines out okay. of Bremerton. Okay. And when you're there, when you live close to the ocean and you live in a city like New York, and then you move to Colorado, there's some type of energy in those mountains. And I felt it. I felt at peace. For the first time, I didn't have to do coke. For the first time, I slept. I learned so it how, relaxed you. I learned how to go fishing. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah, man. That's uh, going skiing and mammoth. You know, growing up there, I think you don't realize. You do not realize. Because to, to you, you're from, you're, you're from like, um, you're from like a, a smaller town. You know, Denver is a small town and you're watching, you know, there's, I was growing up with cable. So you were, you were watching shows based in New York and shit. And, and Denver was a small town. And then you would go to the mountains to do things with your parents but that was kind of like you were going along because they wanted to do something. And for you, you're like, this sucks. I'd rather be at home with my friends running around doing that stuff. So I never really appreciated the mountains until I left Colorado and came back. And then I was like, holy, holy shit. shit. But also in a weird way, that's also why I think I appreciate New York so much is because I grew up in a place like Denver where there is a it's a lower uh, pace. It's a slower pace. Kind of everyone there is that there, there's room out there. And then I moved to New York, and I just liked that everything was there, and you could get to work. And it was like, if you wanted to work, you could go. So I think, you know, having that opposite, either growing up in a different place like New York and Denver, and then having it as an adult, you can appreciate both. Because I don't think there's a better place I could have grown up than Denver, than Aurora. Suburbs of a nice, you know, fucking beautiful. It's beautiful. It's fucking sunny. Beautiful. It's so sunny all nice the time. Nice white people. <laughs> Great. You nice white people. Lately, the last you know, not for a couple years, generations ago. I, yeah. Now you got to remember, I moved to fucking Basalt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and the first thing we did for dinner the first night was go to a place where they gave you a fishing pole. I'm a New York City <laughs> kid. I handled guns. Yeah. I threw yeah. rocks at people. You got to scale a fish. These now. people give you a fishing pole for ten bucks. 
You throw it in the roaring fork. You catch a trout. They take it. They skin it. They cook it. And then they give you potato salad, two pieces of bread, and a beer. That was my first experience. I was like, what the fuck? Yo, that is some How frontier fucking shit. cool is this shit? <laughs> yeah. And everybody's talking to people. And I, I still tell, tell people. To yeah. Me. Somebody put, put it up on Twitter. I still remember hitchhiking. Yeah. Like the big thing in Basalt was they had a hitching post. So you could hitchhike. And people would actually pull up and go, I'm not going up that far today. I'm so sorry. Good morning, though. And I'd go, fuck you, because I'm from New York. You don't fucking uh, tell me good morning. You... I still remember going home the first day. I applied for jobs. And I still remember my buddies like, so how'd it go? I'm like, I'm out of here. They're, they're fucking faggots. <laughs> they tell you good morning. How are you? They ask you how you're doing. They talk to you. Yeah. Like I, I came from 1970 <laughs> New York where you were raised to look straight. You don't look down. You don't make eye contact. Yeah. Only I swear to God, I still remember hitchhiking and a lady pulling up and going, "Good morning." I wish I would give you a ride, but I can't because I'm only going up <laughs> yeah. to uh, Old Snowmass. And me going, "Why do you stop? What the fuck is wrong? Get the yeah, fuck out of here!" Blowing your mind that someone blowing would, my mind that almost, somebody was that nice. It almost feels. Um, did it feel like in, intrusive? Oh like my someone God. Would be like, it "What felt you felt like something I never. It took me a month to get used to, did, and then I was all in. But what happened? When you went back east after getting used to the Colorado conversation, it you- took me about eight months. I stayed and I really enjoyed it. I learned how to ski by myself on Christmas Day '83. I ha- I was all in, but I brought luggage with me. I brought my thievery luggage with me, and uh, Snowmass Village is the size of fucking three blocks. Yeah, and I started robbing jewelry stores and Damn. burglarizing them all Christmas Eve. So I had backed myself out of a position. So yeah. I left. Then I came back a year and a half later, moved back up there like nothing had happened. Again, I left in disgrace. I ended up getting arrested in Boulder. Now, when I moved to Aspen, I went to Boulder. And I was in Boulder five minutes before I told. I looked at my buddies and I go, get the fucking car. Why would you bring me to this filthy hippie stinky sandal wearing fucking place you're just up on the hill watching all those I didn't, even, around. I didn't go to the hill yet i was down on pearl street mall yeah and i go get me the fuck out of here <laughs> people playing the guitar with yeah. dogs and shit yeah, yeah. Like, that's the most here. colorado shit we in the got world. out of there and i never went pearl back street to mall is super I'm fucking like, colorado i'm like i'm not going back to boulder again. yeah like, filthy animals white people. <laughs> i'm never going like back feral there. white everybody had sandals on and yeah. shit yeah. fuck that <laughs> And I went to New York, got a beat in New York, ended up homeless, the whole thing. Okay. And I a plane ride back to Colorado. I said, I'm moving to Colorado Springs. And I bumped into a black guy on the flight, and he goes, man, you don't want to move to no Colorado Springs. That's an army town. Yep. You're the Air Force. Guys, how old are you? 21. You want some pussy. You got to move to Boulder. Yeah. So I landed, got a hotel room, took a bus to Boulder the next day, and I moved to 1012 14th Street. Right on the fucking hill, around the corner from fucking uh, the downtown club, 18, 16 and over. Yeah. Where Canavis McGee punched the guy in the eye and it knocked his eyeball out and shit. Tremendous. This was That's fucking around the awesome. corner from Abo's Pizza. I could throw a rock at the University of Colorado. Yeah. Wow. On 10, 12, 14th Street. You could Dude, throw I know a exactly rock. where that is because my, all my friends' older brothers and sisters went to Boulder. So when I was in high school, you'd go up and go to those house parties, you know, and you just like Halloween, the Halloween house parties. If you're a high school kid in Aurora and you one of your friends, older brothers went to Colorado, you'd be like, oh, let's go up there and drink. You just go and do a keg and pay five bucks. But you were like 17. It was fucking great. I'm going away to a ski resort for New Year's with my daughter. The main reason is to see how she adapts to skiing and how she likes the cold weather. Yeah. If she likes the cold weather, I predict that within three years I'll be living in the Grand Junction area. Grand Junction? I'm moving to that area. Grand Junction? Why Grand Junction, though? Why not? Montrose, Tally Ride. I got all that. It hasn't been polluted yet with the marijuana. Yeah. And there's still houses for $300,000. There you go. That's why why no Breckenridge. Grand Junction Airport flies directly to JFK and LAX seasonal. So you could still get out of there. 
Grand, if anyone ever told me they were going to move to Grand Junction, I'd be like, Grand Junction? In that area. It yeah. It would be 30 yeah. minutes from Grand Junction. I have a dear friend in Montreal. You would have some. Okay. I have a dear friend. I have friends. He was just here. Mike Roebuck. Was okay. Just here. And we spoke. And he goes, you still have plans? And I go, I'm going to surprise you. His family owns a, a supermarket chain out there. Not King Supers. I was about to say. Not King oh, Supers. Okay. I was about to say. Not they King, own King Supers? Not King Super Dupers. Yeah. How far is Denver from that? Oh, uh, that's like a five, over a six-hour drive. Wow, okay. You got to go through the Rockies. That's on the other side. That's the west side of the Rockies. Wow. Okay. Okay. When I, when I, so my point being that till this day, I'm very ashamed of my behavior in Colorado. If I would have done that behavior in New York, San Francisco, L.A., it was accepted. Yeah. But Colorado, to me, still remains a very special place. Yeah. I don't like the marijuana thing in Colorado. Because really? Because I think it brought too much. Bro, Colorado been smoking big dope since the 80s. All right? Colorado got nothing to prove to nobody. I, I moved Col- to Tucson. I was in Colorado in 83, and I was getting weed yeah. that would grow fucking hair on your balls. That high altitude <laughs> reefer. Get the fuck out of so here. So uh, when I went to college, I went to college in Tucson. I went to the University of Arizona. And before I left, you know, I went up to Boulder, and I got an ounce. I got, a, I got And it was four buds. Four long buds, and it was, I, I weighed it, 28 grams, and I took it with me to Tucson, thinking everyone had the equivalent of boulder weed, because when I was in high school, boulder weed was, that's what you wanted to get it. That was the, one, the first time I saw weed with orange hairs, the first time, it, the sticky shit, it was boulder, and I remember I brought that with me, and people in Tucson were like, where the fuck did you get this weed? Listen, and you're like, what these fucking, what these amateurs don't understand. <laughs> yeah. That I'm not even talking about bowl. I'm talking about Colorado as a whole. Yeah. When I lived in Aspen, I used to go to Woody Creek Tap. Yeah. All right. Great Hunter S. Thompson's and I watering hole. Seeing Hunter S. Thompson, and I could I lie to you guys and tell you, I didn't know who the fuck he was. <laughs> I didn't know who the fuck he was. Yeah, but I like that honesty. The one that. time I went in there, he was with Bill Murray. Okay. They were just about to shoot where the Buffalo Rome. All when right. I left. I found out that he was. Then I went in there another time, and he was in there with Don Johnson because Woody Creek Tavern made the best fucking nachos. They used real chorizo. Yeah, Ooh. nobody uses chorizo on their nachos. That's that's yeah. that's mind boggling. Nineteen eighty three. Oh, bring a chorizo into chorizo the mountains of Colorado. Into the mountains of Colorado. So fucking, I uh, would go down there, and I would get weed. The first time the person showed me the weed. I don't know if it was the lighting in the room. <laughs> it looked like Coke from how the crystals yeah. were on the bud. So for people who don't know, now you know. They've been smoking deep reefer in Colorado. <laughs> Those motherfuckers. I had some people who grow on weed where they made the shining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The shining My weed. mom worked at that hotel in uh, college. Those what? fucking twins. Oh, yeah. Shit. Yeah, Tell the, them uh, about how good the buffet is there on Sunday. Oh, I don't know. I've never been to. My mom worked there up in college. What's the name of the hotel? Uh, it's not. It's the. Um, it's not the. Uh, fuck. It's in. It's the Broadmoor. Something like that. The Stanley is what it's called. Right. It's the Stanley in the book, but I think it's the Broadmoor Hotel in in real life. In real life. They have a buffet. The Stanley they, or the, yeah. I, yeah, think, they have, I, think, I think it's still the Stanley. They have a buffet on so it's Sundays. Stanley, it's yeah. the second to, it's the best buffet So my mom Colorado. worked, that, that that hotel is really haunted. Yes. It's, it's yes, a very haunted yes, hotel. And yes. my, my mom worked there in the summer. Yes. And she worked the buffets, which was like a big, that's a big deal at the hotel. The weekend What's buffets. What's the name of the town where that's in? That's this park. That's this park, Colorado. I don't know if it's, this is still true, but as of 10 years ago, Estes Park was number one visited tourist location in the United States. I thought it was the Grand Canyon. Yeah. Really? They have squirrels that come up to you. You can feed them. You've never blue back that's, squirrels. That that's cool, but that's better than the Grand Canyon. Yeah, Canyon. that's great. But that hotel, my mom uh, worked the breakfast shift and she said like they would come in and the tables would be like, you know, chairs on the tables and stuff like Jesus. everything moved around and they have to reset it. But they just became like used to it because that hotel was the haunted. They're just like, oh yeah, Ghosts are fucking with us again. And you're like, cool. And then the shining. And then they made the shining. Because I think my mom was in college when they made the shining. Or was that late 70s? When did the shining come out? Let's find out. I had to say, it had to come out. Fuck. I want to see that new one, Dr. Sleep. Dr. Sleep. 80. Oh, okay. Yeah. So she was way gone. But it was, you know, she And told- I was just moving up there. Okay. So you moved up there 83. And I moved up to Snowmass. On the heels of Ted Bundy. 
Fuck, dude. You, I, you always you forget about Colorado stopover. Get the. Uh, hey, you forget he Ted Bundy made a call. Out of Aspen and twice. He, and he killed the chick at the Wildwood Inn in Snowmass. And I used to hang out at the Stone Bridge, which is right Jesus. up the block. So they would go. That's the first place they'd take you. Let's go see where. Ted Bundy killed the fuck. That's where you would take, man. Right? That's where people would take you. And you, look so like, you want to see where Ted Bundy bashed that lady's yeah, head in? Ben, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Holy, yeah, you forget about the Colorado stopover of Ted Bundy. You think mostly Washington and Florida. You know, Colorado was a very unique place. Like I said, it means the world to me because I became a man there. I yeah. got married, divorced. I failed there as a man. I went to prison there, learned how to shoot. Yeah, I learned how to kill people there. I mean, I had a trainer there that was, that's all he did, blow yeah. up people, wires, battery acid. Jesus. You know, because they 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 used to hide a lot of Vietnam vets in Colorado to protect NORAD. I did not know this. That's fucking crazy. Because NORAD is in Colorado. Yeah, it's in the mountain. So they would have, they would, you know, I just heard this, I don't know how true it is, that they would actually send a lot of, I knew a guy in Snowmass Village that once a year he wore his costume and a helicopter would come and get him. And then he'd leave and then he'd come back and he'd be a skier. But besides that, he had 19 racks of fucking medals. And That's medals. like John J. Rambo. And people had stories about him and then I became friends with him because I worked at a video store. Yeah. And one day I asked him, I said, you really a Green Beret? And he goes, yeah. I go, are you guys the best? He goes, well... Green Beret, a SEAL, a fucking this and this was sitting, and a ranger was sitting around making a bowl of stew. And the ranger was telling his stories, and the SEAL was telling his story, and this guy was his story. And the whole time, the Marine was stirring the pot with his dick. <laughs> like, that's the story he told me. That's how tough I am, all right? <laughs> And he used to wear the little uh, Rambo. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. He's the best. And a helicopter yeah. would come get him. And then there was a there was a guy, an editor named John Link. He edited Above the Law. Okay. Commando. Yeah. And the, what's the Steven Seagal movie? Hard to Kill? Yeah. No, 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 no. The one when he, they, yes, yes. Hard to the kill? one when yeah. he came back, you know, he's in a coma for eight years. Yeah, Hard to Kill. Some two weeks later, he's flying through the air. Fucking shit People up. People got to go to fucking therapy for 10 years. <laughs> yeah, the physical coma. therapy. Yeah. He, he, he did, woke up and started beating the shit out of people. He woke up to acupuncture to himself, well, yeah. first of all. I love that. He, got, he, he acupunctured himself out of a coma. And then, you know, this is when a 87, they wrote some wild <laughs> co cocaine added a He's still making and, those movies. I love it. Is he? But yeah, yeah they like just in, go direct to uh, in Hong Kong. It's him beating all those protests. <laughs> <laughs> That's the next cigar. Hard to protest. Hard to protest. Yeah. What, what dates you got coming up, bro? Uh, I'm gonna be in San Francisco. I'm gonna be in Boston. Uh, all dates at DanSoder.com. I'm hitting the road again January. Hard. Okay. Get that new. You know, put that new hour together. I hear you, man. Dude, thanks tough. so much for having me on, man. It's Bert Kreischer yeah. called me two nights ago. He's starting Thursdays at the Ha Ha Workout Thursdays. He goes, I got to start from scratch again. Yeah. And it's horrible. It's, it's terrifying. horrible. Because you're like, it's a month. Do I know how to write a fucking It's a joke? month of suicidal <sighs> thoughts because <Yeah>. you're like, <laughs> what the fuck am Dude, I going to say? All I keep thinking about is like, what does that even mean? And, it, it, and you don't book yourself for an hour because... You do, because you might as well embarrass yourself, but you go to, like, Albany, like, you know, yeah. where they just got two feet of snow, and they don't give a fuck if you go up there and hit yourself with a hammer in the head. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They don't give a fuck if you bomb up in Albany this weekend. Yeah, that's why I got to wait till January to be like, all right, yeah. I got a semblance of something. Something. To, something. something. Holiday, I got something to do. Yeah, 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 figure something out. But, um, man, thanks so much for having me on. Man, I the first time I ever saw... You know, I I heard of you, and, and but I came through L.A. for a, just a quick stop, and I met up with Ari at the comedy store, and I was with Louis Katz, and we were waiting for Ari, and we walked into the back of the original room, and I saw you do this set, and I was like, man, Joey Diaz is fucking hilarious, because that, I just, that was, it, it was just for some reason, while I was waiting for Ari, Louis and I walked in, sat down, watched you, and you were doing a story about teaching a cat how to do blow and it was one of the fucking <laughs> hardest I've laughed. And I, I remember leaving being like, dude, Joey Diaz is a fucking beast. Just, you know, and, oh, and I don't get out to LA a lot. So it's just nice to meet you. And I'm, uh, thanks for having me on. And I love to do the bonfire. Dude, when, when in your. What, when do you tape? Those? We do Monday through Wednesday, 6 to 8 p.m. 
So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night. Yeah, Three six nights. to eight. Fucking Jay's a hard work. Dude, he's got that. Legion of Skanks. No shit. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. He's doing a great new show at the stand that you definitely have to do called The Worst, where you tell a story and Jay kind of interjects with thoughts or whatever. I've done it. Uh, what nights does he do that? He does it once a month. But I th- if he ever does in LA, dude, I'm telling you, man. That just m- me dream booking you on The Worst with Big Jay would be the shit. But, uh, dude, I love you, man. And thanks for I having me I love you. Thank you very much. And it's that me. Colorado connection. It, it was just No, no, we got to get you back on. Because, dude, I mean, Colorado. yeah. I love that shit. And I miss I, Colorado, but I love living I miss in New it. York. I miss it. And that's why, yeah. I, that's why I told my wife, I go, before we spend a ton of loot, go to vacation in Grand Junction and fly in yeah. and the whole thing. Let's see how she handles Big Bear. Perfect. And if she likes the snow and she likes falling down, and all that shit, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm Colorado bound. I'll ask for forgiveness. Yeah. I'll volunteer with blind kids <laughs> <laughs> just to just to give me good karma. Yeah, yeah. You know, because I always felt like that was the wrong place to do the things I was doing. I yeah. remember Rogan moving to Boulder and calling me and going, "I'm driving in this town, and I'm seeing you, and you, this was like a fucking candy store for you." Yeah. You know, I still remember going to Kmart on Christmas. Yeah. And in Boulder. Yeah. And the place was closed. The gate was open. There was no attendant. There was ten, you know, a couple trees. And the guy said, <coughs> leave your payment in the thing. And I'm like, no, he didn't. And I'm broke. I look in the envelope. There's 200. I take the cash. I leave the checks. And I steal the Christmas tree. I felt so bad about that. I went back and put 200 in this thing, and I didn't tell him for what. You know, there was a story that I didn't do. Yeah. But this is how nice people in Colorado are. And you people are listening, and they're like, oh, they're fucking stupid. No. They're so nice in Boulder. A fucking guy put five boxes in front of five drive-ins in, in a bank of Boulder. Yeah. So the uh, drive-in lanes, it was yeah. a big bank with drive-ins. He put a box and a sign that said, window closed, put deposits in here, you'll receive receipts in the mail. He did that till lunchtime, till they caught on. He came, he got all five boxes. God knows what he stole. Good God. That's how nice the people are. Yeah, they're like, oh, okay. I couldn't, I was like a bully there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, people leave your keys and the ignition in the car. Well, now you get to move back. And now I get to move back and try to be a normal motherfucker. I love that. All right. Dude. I love you, Dan Soda. Yeah, do the best. Listen, uh, the church is brought to you by, don't forget, Dan Soda special. Came out on Saturday night. Catch it on HBO. He's a funny guy. He's a great guy, and uh, I'm happy that he made it on today. I want to thank him. I want to thank the Christ killer. But most importantly, I want to thank you motherfuckers for supporting the church of what's happening now. Let me explain something to you. The holiday season's coming. You're sitting there. What am I going to get this guy? What am I going to get Jimmy? What am I going to get? Ah! I got something for you, and it starts at $79. The Hello Tushy Portable Bidet. You're like, Joey, why would I need a bidet? Why? Because why would you need to cut down a thousand fucking trees to wipe your ass? Wiping your butt with dry toilet paper doesn't remove all this shit. It leaves all the fucking espiritos behind. You got poop on any other part of your body. Would you just wipe it off with dry paper? No. Water cleans better than dry paper, you fucking momo. Tushy sprays, sprays. Water directly into your asshole and removes everything. Listen, bidets are common all over the world, except here. A bidet saves you money on toilet paper. You still use a little toilet paper to patch it down, but the amount doesn't matter. We also, over at Tushy, they got tremendous little Turkish towels to dry your asshole clean. Tushy sprays water into your fucking ass, not toilet water. I'm talking about Tushy connects to the water supply behind your toilet to spray your dirty parts, your nutsack, your asshole, that crack with fresh water. The same water you brush your teeth with. Wet wipes are worse than fucking toilet paper. Listen, take it from your Uncle Joey. If you wipe with paper, you're going to leave fucking cause anal fixtures, and you don't want to have no anal fixtures in your fucking asshole, all right? So bidets are the way to go. They start at $79. They come in different colors. They got a 60-day guarantee. But let me tell you something. I've had mine for, what, maybe four fucking years I'm 300, 300 fucking pounds, and it still washes my asshole. Tip-top Magoo. So, so go to HelloTushy.com right now and press in.
Church, get 10% off your order. Anytime, right now. This is the gift to give. You show up with this, they're going to be fucking happy. And it's easy to install. You don't need a plumber. You can do it all on your own. Go to hellotushy.com right now. Let me tell you something else. The church is brought to you by Stance Socks. They're the most comfortable socks that you could possibly wear. Get them. Stance Socks. They're just not comfy. They're going to turn heads. Their designs are beyond anything you've ever seen on a sock. They're works of art. Whatever you're into. If they, they got Metallica. They got the Karate Kid. They got the whole Quentin Tarantino collection. Every football, every baseball, every basketball team. They got something for every sports fanatic in your life. This Christmas, let me tell you something. These socks, they're just comfortable. You ever just put a pair of socks on? When I fly, I put on my stance. Why? When I go to, to lift weights, I put on my stance. Why? Because they're comfortable. They make your feet feel like a million bucks. You know what I'm saying? They're like fucking an SUV for your feet. They're comfortable. They're, they're just tremendous. And this, again, is another tremendous Christmas present. So right now. For the, first, for the church family, I got a great offer. You ready? Go to stance.com right now, and you'll get a free pair of socks with any purchase. Purchase a pair of socks, they're going to throw a pair of socks in, all right? Stance is the best way to cross everyone off your holiday shopping list. That's stance. Grab a pen, S-T-A-N-C-E.com slash church to get your free pair of socks. Because if they're not stance, they're not socks. They're just pieces of fucking shit, all right? Go to stance.com right now. Stance, S-T-A-N-C-E dot com slash church and get a free pair of socks when you order whatever they have to sell you. That, who takes care of you like Uncle Joey? I want to thank Hello Tushy and I want to thank Stance Socks. But most importantly, I want to thank you fucking savages. Calusa Casino is sold out. There's maybe two tickets left for the Christmas show up at the Ice House. In San Francisco, the second show, there's still some tickets left for uh, Palace of Performing Arts, and it's after Christmas, so we'll have a good time on a Saturday night. I love you guys. Do not forget to watch the Dan Soda special on HBO. I want to thank the Christ Killer. I want to thank fucking Dan Soda, but I want to thank you guys for being fucking family, and thank you for all the compliments on Mercy. She is a great kid, and I'm trying my hardest. I love you, motherfucker. See you Monday morning. Or maybe Tuesday. I don't know. I haven't made up my mind yet. But I'll see you next week. All right? Stay black. God bless you. Don't let nobody fuck with you. Kick this fucking mule, Lee.